Hey everyone, uh, so today we're going to talk about in our whiteboard series, carrier scorecarding. Uh, you hear it a lot, you may call it your KPIs, but how you're measuring carrier performance. Um, and that can mean a lot of things to different companies and it also can be measured a lot of different ways. So we're gonna start first really with just the specifics of the shipment. So when you, in my mind, because um, I've always been in operations, when I think about carrier scorecarding, I think about did you pick up the shipment on time and did you deliver it on time? And that really speaks to kind of over here on the left-hand side, what we're looking at. So we're gonna wanna measure, uh, and we measure today, the percentage of on time to the target pickup date. We measure the percent, percentage of on time to the pickup appointment. Now these are different and we'll go over that. The other is the percentage to the target deliver date and the percentage of on time performance against the delivery appointment. Again, this seems strange, right? Why wouldn't those be the same? We'll get into why. The other is you wanna see the average days before the pickup and the delivery was scheduled. Um, you also want to check your average lead times on orders from tender to pickup. You want to check, you want to measure with your carriers their tender rejection rate. You want to measure, especially in truckload, this is really important to measure the number of negotiated moves versus spot. And if you're in the pandemic, as we all are today, you're seeing this rise. You're seeing truckload contracted rates that aren't being held that are moving in the spot. And it's important to measure that. And we do, we do that as part of our carrier scorecarding. The other is your overall spends with your carriers and the breakout of the accessorials. And then people often miss this one, but it's your invoicing procedures. How is the carrier performing on invoicing? That matters, it's important. So let's deep dive a couple of these um, because it can get confusing especially when we start talking about the shipment. So you're, you're a company now that is interested in scorecarding your carriers, where do you start? And typically what happens is you have an order in your ERP system and it has some target dates around it. A lot of times you'll have a target pickup date and a target delivery date. Well, then what happens? So you give the, the shipment to the carrier and you tell them, this is my target pickup date of let's say 10-1. And then my target delivery date is gonna be 10-6, right? So it's gonna be, let's just say in this example, it's a full truckload and you have a five day window. Just say this is a Monday and this is a Friday. So you have a, you have a target pickup date of 10-1, you want it delivered on 10-6, it's a full load of freight but it's actually going to deliver in two days. So if they pick this up on 10-1, it would deliver on 10-3, but you don't want it delivered until 10-6. So then what happens is the carrier is gonna grab it on 10-3, they're gonna pick it up, in order to meet the 10-6 delivery time. And when you scorecard them with this data, they're gonna show fail. They're gonna show a failure on their pickup. It's gonna show late. When in fact that actually isn't late, it's, it's meeting the requirement of the delivery to the transit. So as an organization, you need to decide, what am I measuring on? And if it's both, it can be both, but just know that in this situation, that's not a service failure on pickup. And how are you gonna grab that in the data, right? So data is great, but understanding the why of the data is really important. And sometimes you've got to build some tools in, you know, we wouldn't put this in front of a carrier as a service failure because it'd say, hold on a second, this is a full truckload. I'm not holding on to your freight for two days. I'm going to charge you layover fees if I have to. I'm going to commit to pick this up for the, to meet the transit of 10-6. So that's one reason why measuring some of this stuff can be really hard. The same holds true for appointments. So if you are, if you have customers who require an appointment, you know, we always use the big box retailers, the Walmarts of the world of an example, but now keep in mind with this 10-1 pickup date, let's say this is going to one of those really strict big box retailers that requires a very, very strict appointment time. Now they give you an appointment, the, the customer says you've got to deliver this by 10-7. That's your required arrival date, 
The carrier picks it up on 10-1. Let's say this is moving LTL. The carrier picks it up on 10-1. He is required, the carrier is required to call that big box retailer for an appointment, right? So you've given him, I'm sorry, I put this in the wrong place. Let's fix this. You've given him a pickup date of 10-1 and you've told the carrier you need an appointment. It's already been set. That's your rad for 10-7. Carrier picks it up. Carrier calls, which is where this is. This gets tricky. Carrier calls, let's say picks it up on 10-1. On 10-2, the carrier calls for the delivery appointment. Says we have a required delivery arrival day of 10-7. Big box retailer says yes, appointment is made and delivered. Well, what can happen, and again, extremely hard to measure, is they pick it up on 10-1. Maybe they don't call until 10-6 for the appointment for 10-7. And this customer requires a three-day notify ahead for a RAD date for an appointment. The carrier failed because they didn't call in enough time to get that RAD appointment day and time met. And so what does that mean? How do you measure that? It's really, really, really difficult. And sometimes, it's your data doesn't allow you to do that. And in other times it's the carrier's data. So these are things to think about when you start building carrier scorecards. You know, the average lead time on orders from tender to pickup is really important and understanding your carriers, how they operate and how much notice they want. You wanna be measuring this um, because what happens is you could tender too early and then they miss the pickup because they can't commit to the capacity. So super important that you keep your eye on that. Rejection rate, you know, it's kind of self-explanatory, but that's how many shipments have you tendered to your carrier in a given week or a month? We look at this weekly, um, especially right now, because the service is, the industry is just a mess. The service is, you know, really in trouble. So it's really important for us that we understand this rejection rate. So we've tendered X amount of loads to you this week and you've rejected this many. You want to be having those discussions with your carriers. If you've got a primary carrier slated in a lane and you're seeing the rejection rate go up on coverage, you're going to want to start seeking alternatives. Negotiated versus spot, same thing. Super important, especially in the truckload market, that if you have a negotiated contract rate and the carrier is not meeting it and they're giving you a spot rate because of market conditions, you've got to measure that. And you have to in the, and what that means is in your data set, you've got to see when you tender a shipment and the carrier accepts it, you have to have the ability with your data to say, yes, that's a negotiated rate or no, it's a spot. Otherwise you can't measure it. And the carriers, you can ask them to measure this, but really you want to control your own destiny. Also a bit self-explanatory, but the spends with accessorial. So a lot of times you're capturing what you paid for a shipment, but you're not capturing what the details in that shipment. So there's line haul, there's fuel surcharge, there's detention, there might be a lift gate fee. You wanna grab those things so that you really know, not just from even a carrier scorecarding perspective, when you comes to negotiating time, you wanna know how many lift gates are in your overall shipments, right? Uh, which is why you want a scorecard here. The other reason you want a scorecard is if you're looking at cost by customer, you know, you wanna know that this customer, every time you deliver to them, there's a lumper fee or there's a sort and seg fee, or they tie up your carrier and you're paying detention. That's a cost to you as the shipper. And if you don't break it out, you don't know about it. You just assume you're paying this rate and it's line haul and fuel when in fact this massasorial is in there because the customer is either delaying or they're requiring your carriers to do additional things. Um, and then the invoicing procedures. And, and honestly, for me, this is a big one. If you don't have a handle on how long an invoice takes to come into your, to, whether it's your ERP system, your T TMS system, you want to be measuring that. As soon as that freight delivers, you want an invoice and you want to be measuring from delivery to invoice how many days the carrier is taking to do that. Uh, one is you have better control of a budget, you have better control of a accrual, but you also have 
A lot of times carriers chasing you for money on invoices they haven't even billed you for yet. So unfortunately, again, you would think this would be, a, you know, should be a practice on your carrier, but you've got to control your own destiny. You've got to make sure that they're invoicing you for uh, in, a, in a timely fashion. And that, and it does matter because if you're showing past due with a carrier only to find out it's because their invoices aren't coming in to you, you know, that's a problem because your credit is being jeopardized based on their inefficiencies to send you an invoice. Super important. The other part of invoicing procedures, you know, is these kind of corrected invoices or balance due invoices. Now, balance dues and corrected, what does that mean? So something happened with the shipment that they performed a service and they didn't send the charge on the original invoice, they're gonna send you another one. Or they've corrected it because the weight that you put on the bill of lading was 40,000 pounds and it ended up being 44,000 um, pounds. So you'll get supplementally, supplement invoices to an original invoice and you've gotta have the ability to measure those. Um, and also to understand them because if the carrier continues to have to send balance dues or corrected invoices because they're not doing it properly, that's more time and labor in your finance team. It's more uh, time and labor in, you, in your operations team because finance is probably sending those invoices back to whoever is responsible for freight in supply chain, transportation, and logistics and saying, hey, are we really supposed to pay this extra charge on this invoice? Um, that matters and you wanna be able to review that with your carrier. And then you wanna think about with all of, you know, so let's say here we have 10 items. Um, actually, we have 11 because you also want to think about claims. So if you're having claims problems with a carrier, you want to be able to say what they are, how many you filed, and how many they've honored. Um, and so when you do all this, then you can score them. So how do you want to score? And really that is, you know, we work for a lot, a lot of different companies and the way, the way they measure these carrier scorecarding practices is different. You know, we have clients who they're actually not uh, super concerned on the delivery end, but they're very concerned that it gets shipped on time. So their, their scorecarding for on-time pickup uh, weighs heavier than their scoring for on-time delivery, right? And so they're deciding what the scoring mechanism should look like in terms of overall percentages of score. And that's why this is hard to do. So I'm gonna step aside for one second. If you wanna take a picture of this, please do, because I'm gonna erase it. And the reason I'm gonna erase it is I wanna start talking about why this is so hard to pull off. Okay. All right, well, I hope you have it. If not, call us and we'll review it. I'll just do this tab. So why is this so difficult to do? One is, as a company, you decide you want a scorecard well, what do you have for data? That's what you have to figure out. So it usually starts with an order. So start with the order and go into your ERP system and say, okay, I have an order. That order is essentially at some point going to become a shipment. At the order level, what do you have for details? Do you have an expected ship date? Do you have an expected arrival date at your customer? Figure out what's available. And then it's a shipment. And so you've tendered it to a carrier. And how did you tender it? Um, and then the details of the shipment. Where are they captured? So here at Aborn, we're in a transportation management system. So this order is in an ERP with our client. And it gets dropped into our TMS. Now we make the digital connections with the carriers, right? Just say it's ABC carrier and it's Jill's trucking. These carriers are then giving us API and EDI technology to give us these milestones in the shipment. So when did you call for the appointment? When was the appointment made and when did it deliver? When did you call for the pickup? When was the pickup made and did it pick up on time? All of those targets are in our TMS, but there's a catch. Just like what do you have available for data? What does the carrier have available for data? And we hear all the time, 
you know, with EDI, there are standards. There's really no standard. And API technology is a lot quicker, but again, still no real standard. So you're gonna need to deep dive your carriers and have these discussions with them around what do you have available to give me for, we call it kind of the milestones of a shipment so that I can then determine how much of the shipment movement that I can capture in scorecard. Super important. You will have carriers that will be able to tell you when it picked up and delivered, but they won't be able to tell you when they called for an appointment, let's say, an appointment on pickup or an appointment on delivery. So it's really, really important. The other part that becomes really important is when service fails, and the data will tell you when the service fails. So if you get this all kind of figured out, and let's say out of 100% of your shipments, you've got 80% of it that can tell the story that you want to meet your carrier scorecarding re requirements. Now you have the data and you can identify the failures by milestone, but you can't always identify the why. So if you get a must arrive by date from a customer and you give that freight to the carrier, the carrier still has to make an appointment on that. Well, what if the customer doesn't give the carrier the appointment on the required delivery date that they gave you? Who's, the, who's at fault there? Uh, the carrier will tell you it's not them. You know, we used a portal or we called the distribution center. You said we had to deliver on 10-7, uh, the shipper says 10-7, but your customer would not let us bring this in until 10-11. So in your scorecarding, that's a failure, but who's at fault? And honestly, I don't know, we're not there yet as an industry that data is gonna tell that story and tell you the, the who and the whys. It's just gonna give you the measurement of performances. And then it's really, really important that internally as a company, you're, you're discussing the, the whys of the, of the results of the scorecarding. You understand your customers delivery requirements, and then you understand what your carriers can provide. And the customer delivery requirements are huge. We see it all the time where shippers are getting chargebacks from their customers because they missed a RAD date, only to find the RAD date was on a Tuesday, but that distribution center in, on the receiving end only receives on Wednesdays and Fridays. So you're never gonna meet a RAD date if it's not gonna be on a Wednesday or a Friday. And again, the data is gonna show you that, but then who is at fault? Um, and a lot of times, um, what we use the scorecarding for is to deep dive the discussions. It gives us the ability to then have the discussions, not point fingers on blame, but figure out where it broke down, why it failed. And sometimes, you know, we go back to our client and say, look at, if you're gonna always have a required date of delivery from your customer that isn't a Wednesday or a Friday to this distribution center, it's always gonna fail. So can you work with the buyer at this customer and say, look at, I don't know if you know this, but your distribution center will only let our carriers deliver on these two dates. So can we work to change RAD dates when you put orders in that they're meeting the requirements of your receiving department? So again, scorecarding, um, is such a terrific tool, very, very difficult to pull off. Um, and I hope I've demonstrated a little bit why it's hard to do. Um, but I think if you're in the industry and you're responsible for freighting, you don't scorecard today and you're thinking about, should I be scorecarding? Start thinking about what you have available for data, what you believe you want to measure in terms of milestones, work with your carriers to see if they can provide those milestones, and then hopefully you have some technology like a TMS to really be able to measure all this for you in a live environment and then report on it after the fact. So I hope that helps. Reach out with any questions. As you know, you can find Aborn and Company on LinkedIn. I'm Jill Clifford, also on LinkedIn, or hit our website with our Contact Us page. Thanks so much.